Scotland versus France, two teams with huge psychological issues to deal with after last week. How will they match up this coming Saturday? I've got Elko with me to talk it all through. Elko, how are you? Your resident psychologist, TT, is in the house. Yeah, all good. Looking forward to uh, another round of matches this weekend. Can't wait. Fantastic. And before we get into the selections themselves, which I think are quite interested in lots of different ways, just give me a sort of an overall feel of what you're, what you're looking forward to, what you're expecting this coming Saturday. Well, it's just going to be so intriguing as to uh, what team turns up um, for each nation. Um, you've got You've got Scotland coming off uh, a unbelievable first half, shocking second half, nearly, you know, lost a, a game they had in the bag at half time. And then you've got a French team that didn't turn up, frankly, um, and uh, whose uh, defence that they, you know, they pry their game on and have one of the best angriest defence coaches in the world. Um, you know, we'll be, we'll, be, we'll be getting them to go. It's intriguing because do Scotland like go for it and play like attacking rugby like they did in the first half because we spoke about it in our review that when they when they uh, uh, sort of had men down to start to try to manage the game and go controlled the wheels came off so do they go attacking and let Finn go and wouldn't France just love them to do that <laughs> just absolutely <laughs> smash them so this is really a, a bit weird how, how both teams pitch up I can't wait to see yeah, it's incredibly intriguing. It's the first match of the weekend, and I think it's it's definitely pre-game. It's definitely the biggest match and the most exciting one. Okay, without further ado, let's get into the selections, and we are going to start uh, with Scotland and their forwards. So they have gone, apart from Richie Gray, who's out with injury, they've gone with the same front five. Gilchrist coming into the second row, but it's the back row where all the big changes have really happened. One in force due to Luke Crosby's injury, but then talk me through the rest, Alco. What are you seeing? Why do you think they've chosen these people to play well, this weekend? Well, uh, it's literally just come out, right? And um, sort of looking at it on socials. And I was looking at it kind of going, where, uh, someone's missing. Who is missing? Hmm. And then looking and then read read the review. They didn't mention his name, which I thought was telling. But Jamie Ritchie's gone. He's axed. He's completely dropped out of the squad, um, which <laughs> pretty harsh. Um, I thought he was OK. <laughs> you know, I played pretty well. He's the ex-captain. And um, Darge comes in as captain um, and, and Ritchie's gone. So what happened there? I wonder was something said after Finn's interesting post-match game where he spoke about players not sticking to scripts and doing stuff they shouldn't do. Um, whether, you know, a bit rich. But anyway, um, yeah, that, that was a big thing. I was I, I was really amazed at, at that. Really great to see Darge coming back from injury. You know, we 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 spoke about him before and what a great, what a great player he is. But you you also spoke pre-tournament about how Scotland had a lot of ways of combining their back row. They can kind of interchange into eight and six and seven. Um, so good balance. Let's see how they go. Um, it should be an intriguing um, fight in the back row, uh, I think. Definitely. And uh, as we mentioned, this is uh, Scotland were very physical last weekend against Wales, particularly in the first half. And this pack, if anything, looks bigger and more physical, which will certainly be needed against a huge French outfit. OK, let's go into the backs. And I think, yes, this is exactly the same as was picked last weekend. And as I mentioned in my, uh, my when I guessed the selection, I, I saw no reason to change it. Elko, what are your thoughts? Yeah, 100%. You can put your, put your house on it, really. Um, they... I, I don't remember sort of the back line making loads of massive mistakes in the second half. I think it was more the fact they just couldn't hold on to any ball and, and Wales just absolutely cut through them and dominated um, them as a team as opposed to the back line. Um, so I, th I think you'd be crazy not to to pick this uh, this confident um, attacking back line. And like I say, as I said, they've just got to they've just got to go for it from from how they started the game um, and let Russell work some magic. But yeah, I wouldn't have changed anything. I thought um, Tupelota and, and Jones were outstanding um, in the first half. I love that combination. Such powerful runners. Um, you know, they're on the inside channel, they're really strong, but then Jones has got that ability for a big man to to, to have some gas, you know, so 
um, fair play um, and could see Rowe. There was a, I think Rowe was a little bit of a doubt, but um, could see he's come through and, and um, had a decent game. Yeah, completely agree. Okay, on to the bench. And, uh, well, there's a couple of things here. I mean, WP now was back in the squad, but hasn't been selected at tight head. As I said last mm. <clears throat> week, I thought Miller Mills did well off the bench. Um, and the other one then is, is as you mentioned earlier, Christie coming into the back row sub spot ahead of probably Jamie Ritchie. Yeah, <laughs> it's so hot. It's a really weird one. Um, like Christie's good and everything, but you're losing bags of experience. Um, and, and with Watson gone as well, whatever happened there. I don't think Gregor's got a thing with Scottish back rows at the moment, but uh, there you go. Um, yes, and and again, you know, they got that nice, um, steady sort of uh, back uh, three backs there that that can, that can bring some some. Uh, interesting um, capability if needed, um, particularly Redpath, but let, let's see what happens. But a decent, a decent. Um, I mean, it's not a bomb squad by any means, but they'll do a job. Yeah, and just in terms of Christie and the way he plays, he's like, he's a really exciting player with ball in hand. He's a great carrier and he's a great support player. So it's interesting how, what he might be able to add to the game in the later stages. Okay, let's move on to France. And I found this selection quite interesting as well. Um, in the forwards, they've really they've only swapped one, haven't they? Um, and I say swap, Valencia, very yeah, Valencia obviously uh, suspended, and they've gone for a lighter second row in Wockey. I'm wondering if one of the other more experienced, heavier second rows have been available. Whether he, they would have started or whether they've gone for Wockey deliberately anyway. What do you think, Elko? Uh, <clears throat> well. They got a lot of criticism for not picking them last week. Um, in you know, in regards to line out, he's he's one of the best defensive um, second row jumpers that there is around. He, he's renowned for that, and and it was a big surprise that he didn't start against Ireland. Who's you know, if if we if we're being truthful, that their their, their uh, line out was really struggling um, uh, in, in in the World Cup. Were they 14th in the world or something ridiculous? So. Um, and then they had 100%, but they had 100%. They, they, France found it very hard to compete. Um, fair enough, uh, they had someone gone, um, but even 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 earlier in the game before Willemsen was sent off. So I think I think there was potentially pressure, um, noise in France uh, why he wasn't picked in the first place. Um, and oh, do they need do, do they need to pick a massive second row playing against Scotland? Probably not. Um, so I, I think I think it's a it's a decent selection there, and then as you said, everybody else is the same, and I I like that. I think um, as a, as a player, you know, you want to get a second chance. Uh, I would say that's probably been part of the psychological games this week is to say, you guys messed up, you let your country down, you didn't show up. We're going to give you another go, and they come out like madmen and 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 go at the, go at the Scottish. So um, I like that selection. It's very Sean Edwards esque. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's move on to the backs. And just one change here with BL Beira coming back in for Moa Fana. And I just want to back up what you just said then as well, because I think this overall selection screams of kind of maturity, screams of consistency and trust. I think they trust these players to be the best players that they've got. And despite what happened last week, they've given them a shot to go and put things right this week. <coughs> absolutely. They're a brilliant side, right? And I th maybe they've reviewed and 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 looked at something during the week that they didn't get quite right. Maybe, maybe they were maybe fitness wise they did something wrong. I don't I don't know because I, I think the general consensus is that there was something not quite right. They weren't they weren't on it. I think yeah, I, they made a few changes. I mean, again, loads of pressure around nine in the press in France. They they they're all they were going after Luku and. Um, even more with with um, the chap that's missing to play sevens. Uh, the fact he was playing um, on the on the Saturday and had, had a worldy game, he put even more pressure, I think, around what are they doing with nine. But I've, they're right to stick with that with that halfback pairing. Um, and the uh, other, we, we thought he might start anyway in the first game, didn't we? And maybe they they think, okay, we'll bring in a bit of that youth, a bit of edge. Um, but I think it's brilliant that they stick with twelve and thirteen as well because they were, I mean, Dante particular for for Burns try. I mean, he must be having nightmares about that. So one would imagine these guys are going to come out and and you know they're going to be either awesome or this or maybe there is something going on. But looking forward to seeing how they react. 
hundred percent. Um, let's look at the bench now. So we've got Marchand, who I thought possibly might start, although Marvaka did have plenty of energy last week. Some of his detail wasn't great. Uh, Telfanua in at loose head uh, because Wardy was injured from last week. Uh, Tuolagi keeps his place on the bench, and then Rumar comes in uh, to fill that bench spot for the second row, and then everything else is same. Moafana taking over. From Bielberry, and I think Murfana actually defensively made a couple of errors last week, so they might look at that and go. I mean, we thought this his selection was more defensive based, but he stepped in a couple of times when he didn't need to, which Ireland exploited. I thought, yeah, and I guess they, they, they'd expect someone the, the back line that we just spoke about being so so good in, in the Scottish guys, and, and with Finn there, they probably would have potentially targeted him uh, and looked at that. Um, it means that they're not they don't. There, he's he's not the kind of player that the other winger is that you'd bring in at the end who's going to rip it up with a tired defence. It's slightly different, so they won't have that. Um, but maybe they feel they can they can do something earlier on in the game. I mean, it's still a strong a strong uh, bench there, and it'd be great to see um, Twigalagi coming on again. I thought he he did okay. Um, he's going to take a bit of time to, to get into it, but he's a, a man mountain, and uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing him um, bang some boys. Yeah, absolutely. Now then, let's think about what type of game we expect to see. It's apparently due to be dry up in Edinburgh on Saturday, uh, two p.m. So, uh, I mean, conditions should be good for a really exciting game. I think we've gone through this all the way through this episode, and I think it's going to be so key. How do these teams react mentally based on what they've just gone through? Can Scotland take the positives from the first half and park the second? Can France? I'm more worried about France, to be honest. I just think they built up for so many years heading to that home World Cup. And I just wonder if they've really got that collective why that they need to continue to perform in this championship once now the Grand Slam's gone and they've had that heavy defeat. You know what? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? Um, I guess I guess the the defeat last week and the manner might, might turn into the why. Um, and... You know, if the if the management are, are clever, they might be able to to, to tap into that. Um, but yeah, I, I take your point. It, it could be that. But they're, listen, they're too good, and their age profile is not not silly. Um, you know, they 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 they're and they're professional players. At the end of the day, they should be able to to go at this. Um, Scotland at home is is a is a is a massive challenge. But you know, they're travelling. Um, <laughs> well, let's see what the weather does. I don't know. It, it's not great in the UK at, at all at the moment. Um, and it certainly will have been raining beforehand. So that, so the, the pitch might be still greasy um, uh, come come Saturday. But uh, yeah, it's it, it's a tough one. My, my, my thoughts are, if, if I was coaching France, I would be extremely pragmatic and kind of revert back to what's worked for them over the last four years. And that's <clears throat> massive pack, huge scrum. Uh, being very dominant um, in in the front eight um, and being very very physical, We've got massive centres, bash it up, um, as uh, Edward said in the Netflix show, kick the effing ball in the first half um, or in, in of your pitch, you know, and and just get rid of the ball. And I think they will do that. I think they're going to kick loads of ball cleverly, um, not loosely, um, and I think they're going to have quite a pragmatic defensive game. Um, and and that's why it's intriguing because we know what, what Scotland might bring. Yeah, completely. I I completely agree. I think France will, will, you know, compress their ideas a little bit and just be more direct. Which you know, based on this Scottish selection in their forwards in particular, who are big and physical, I think it's going to be a monumental first twenty minutes at the weekend. But who do you think is going to win, Alco? Who's your pick? Uh yeah, it's it's an uh, interesting one, isn't it? I, I mean, my gut says France. Uh, I said it. I said it after the review uh, from Friday night. I, I don't think they're going to lose another game. Um, I, th- I think they're they're going to take revenge. They're going to be angry with themselves. Uh, I've been thinking about this over the, over the last few days around how teams uh, kind of mirror their coaches, um, and and you can really see that with some teams. You know, Farrell. If you imagine him playing or how he, you know, his team plays, how I feel he play the game. Um, Greg, Gregor in Scotland, I think, is massively, massively the same. And then like Edwards has got a big, big say in in, in that. So I, I think they're going to be an angry uh, sort of northerner French 
uh, mad team that's going to come out and, and, and go well. But I think it's going to be fairly close. Um, I think it will be close. Whether Scotland can deal with the pressure of the talk around Grand Slam, they seem to be favourites over here um, because of the way France played and the way Scotland played in the first half um, and the fact that consistency in selection and that back line. So be interesting to see how they deal deal with that TT, to be honest with you. But um, I'm going to go uh, France plus eight. Oh, big win. OK, I am actually going to take the opposite stance. I think Scotland might just pull out a really big performance this coming weekend. I think the slight changes they've made will, will help them. And I think they are going to stick in the game for long enough and get some magic moments that's going to build enough points to win this game. Close, though, I think it's going to be... I think it could be high scoring again, you know, once once things break out. 28-27 to Scotland, I'm going to go for. Oh, my God. Sean Edwards will be... On, <laughs> we'll have to take his shoelaces out if they can see nearly 30 points again. Okay. Interesting. All right. I think it's going to be 8-0 to France. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's what we think. This is where we think the game could be won or lost based on these team selections. But what do you think at home? Do you think we've got it right? Um, do you think there's any key performers that we haven't spoken about that you think are going to make a big difference in that game? Let us know in the comments down below and we'll join you there for a conversation. Give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind while you're down there. And Elko, thanks so much for your time today. Thanks, CT. See you soon. Amazing. And you can subscribe there. Watch that one next. And don't forget to get out and play.